Hey guys, I'm gonna do something a little bit different here today. Uh, I just wanted to talk to you guys about the history of uh, Gen 2 Can Am diffs and kind of the history of mud and wheels and how it all started. And, and if you're still around at the end, I'm gonna tell you about the future of our company and new product launch. So I hope you stick around for that. So yeah, um, this is all going back to the spring of 2013. I bought my first Gen 2 Can-Am 1000 Outlander. Uh, when I bought it, I think it had about 400 miles on it. And it was a pretty awesome machine back in the day. When I got it, it already had a few mods on it. It was running 29 and a half inch outlaws. Um, some clutches and a, I think it had a full muzzy system on it at the time, Power Commander 5. Uh, it also had a commander diff in it. Uh, the original diff had blown up and the previous owner had spent a little extra money and back in the day putting the commander diffs in the Outlanders that was considered the upgrade. So that was all with under 400 miles on it. I got the bike and I rode it for most of the season, but I start to hear a little bit of clicking coming from the from the back end. So, being that my machine was still under warranty, I took it into the dealer and said, "Check this out for me." I said, "I think the diff is NFG," and they tore the bike apart. They gave me a call and said, "Yeah, the diff is no good," and they then told me I didn't have any warranty. So, you know, being that the bike was already at the Can-Am dealership, I told them just go ahead and do the repairs. I think I spent about 1200 bucks getting that diff rebuilt. And uh, then I asked to see my parts, and as soon as I saw those parts, I knew there was an issue. I was pretty convinced it was in the setup of the differential and uh, I was pretty convinced that I was going to run into the exact same problem down the road. So I started doing a little bit of research. I was looking for an answer, a solution to this differential problem. If you went online back in 2013 and you're on the Can-Am game, you know that it was, I'm going to call it pretty much an epidemic. Um, one question I had though was that some guys seem to have, you know, really good luck with them getting, you know, a couple 3,000 miles on them and then the next guy couldn't get, you know, they'd blow them up in the parking lot. And I kind of wanted to know why that was. I was thinking at the time there must be a reason for that. So I started buying up blown up cores and I started doing you know some research and, and looking at these parts and I started seeing a very common theme is the uh, pinion teeth the tips of them were wearing and once they wore thin enough then they would crack and the tips would break off and then once that happened well you know the neck of the differential would twist off when you got pieces of metal floating in between two gears, it just forces themselves apart and the next would break off. So, seeing that common theme and then I, I started noticing a difference in the pinion gears. I have actually, this is going back to 2013, um, I started seeing that the pinion gears themselves started measuring them and studying them and the pinion gears themselves there was a 16 thousandths variance in the pinion gear 16 thousandths of an inch doesn't seem like a lot and it basically related to where the head of the gear was placed on the pinion shaft the length of the, the overall length of the pinion shaft had been the same but the placement of the gear on the shaft varied as much as 16 thousandths of an inch. And the guys on the low end of the 16 thousandths of an inch, they had pretty good luck. I've actually seen three variances. There was one in the middle, 
those guys kind of, uh, if, if you had one of those pinion shafts, you would have moderate success with it, and if you were on the high end of the 16,000s, then damage was very rapid. Uh, so I, once I found that out, I started to uh, rebuild them. I started with mine. I believe it took me about eight or nine tries to get it dialed in perfect. Um, convinced that the teeth were wearing. It wasn't necessarily anything to do with overall strength, but I found that the teeth were wearing, so I started playing with the different settings, pinion depth, preload, back lodge. And that variance of 16 thousandths of an inch had a real big effect on all the settings, depending on which pinion shaft you had. It really altered all three of those settings, pinion depth, not so much uh, preload, but backlash a lot. We got that dialed in, we ripped that diff for a couple, two and a half, maybe close to three years. You know, started promoting the differential repair that I had come up with, our own procedure, to make sure that the diffs were getting not wear so rapidly and then not cause catastrophic failure in the end. Using all stock components, stock bearings, stock gears, stock housings, I think we went close to two years, actually, I think it was like 22 months, and we had a few hundred diffs in circulation without a single failure. Um, that being said, in 2013, the 1000XMR diff came out, that had the spiral bevel gears, it had the dual tapered roller bearings uh, in the pinion shaft, bigger needle bearing, bigger case, better all around. Everybody was convinced that that was the answer to, you know, the smaller Gen 2 diff with just the, um, the straight bevel gears and the, just the ball bearings wasn't long before those diffs started failing bad and I got my first one of those diffs and I was convinced that I could correct that problem as well. So you know you get online, you get on Facebook, you get on the forums and you're promoting what you're doing and uh, one day Shane Dowden made a comment to me, Shane Dowden from S3 Racing at the time, he had one of the baddest bikes around probably to this day. And uh, he made the comment, he says, I wish I could get a diff to hold up in my silver rocket. And I told him, you know what, Shane, I'm up for the challenge, give me a shot. So, yeah, sent him an XMR diff. Hang on, fellas, the wife's calling. Okay, so where was I? So anyway, sent Shane, Next XMR diff, that diff ended up going in Dustin Jones, Red Renegade at the time. Uh, they raced that bike, I think, for a couple seasons and eventually got sold, but passed the test. That diff held up, and eventually we did get uh, an XMR diff, one of our XMR Torque Series diffs, into Shane Silver Rocket. And uh, worked with some major race teams in the CMR, S3 racing in the CCMR, Bill Ford, he also raced in the CMR. And, you know, started to really take things seriously. Started a company and started promoting what we do. Built a website. We, uh, we've got diffs everywhere in North America, from Alaska to Florida and everywhere in between. Diffs in Australia, diffs in Europe, Scotland, Czech Republic, Russia, Sweden, I'm probably forgetting some, but we're sending diffs internationally. And uh, we've done this all using stock components, stock bearings, stock gears. Um, we just kind of found 
um, some issues with Can-Am setup on some of their stuff. Yeah. I think one of the reasons why we've been so successful doing this, and I know other people have tried, limited success, but pretty much all the differentials that Can-Am you know, builds or come out of the mass production out of the factory, they all, they're all set up a little bit different. You might get a run that's set up the same for a few months or whatever, and then the next batch you get from Can-Am, they're totally different. Some are better than others. All the Can-Am differentials have had, uh, you know, upgraded part numbers, a little bit moderate design changes, uh, but overall, you know, it just comes down to mass production, and we build them with quality techniques. We get, we've got our settings, our procedures dialed in. Can't really, you know, sell an ass lot, so why don't we just sell a rebuild kit? Well, because, you know, the magic comes from the precision settings. And, uh, they're not all the same. Everyone needs to be set up a little bit different. Not everyone, but, uh, over the course of time, depending which um, particular part number of cases you have, which batch they come from, which production run they come from, the settings always change. It was just too complicated for me to put out a, you know, for me to put out a rebuild kit, you know, put this shim here, put that shim there. People sometimes will ask me, well, if you're using stock components, how does it make it stronger? Well, when you've got two parts that are working together, meshing together, if you don't have them in unison and you don't have the settings dialed in, um, quite literally, those gears can tear themselves apart. Failure's catastrophic where, you know, the cases explode and, and everything else, so it's kind of what we've done over the years. And uh, having said that, we're about to I've been holding back releasing this information for the better part of, well, it's well over a year, probably a year and a half. We've been working on designing our own differentials. It's going to be a two-phase process. Starting with gears, we're using high-quality manufacturing techniques, high-quality materials. And in phase two, we'll be bringing out our own cases to complete, have our complete differential and uh, making a few design changes to the case We're gonna be making a few design changes to the gears we've had uh, we've done a lot of studying failures what fails what causes the failures and we're gonna try to beef up the areas that have been failing we're going to try to bring you guys the strongest, the best quality diff for your Can-Am Gen 2 on the market. And we're going to be using, we're not sure yet, we're going to be using Timken bearings, maybe a German bearing, maybe a Japanese bearing, but for now, I think the plan is to run with Timkins. And through a lot of study and work and everything else, we're hopefully going to get the price come in in a nice, you know, something that's not going to break the bank, but still going to be reliable for guys running, you know, 36s on the 6-inch lifts. The Wheeler game's evolving. We're going to evolve with it. kind of a bit of a history of what's been going on with our company with Gen 2 Discs. 
and uh, hope you guys enjoyed this, kind of breaking your silence a little bit for the first time in the last five years, four and a half, five years, what exactly we do, and uh, anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, um, if anybody has any questions about some of the stuff I've said today, I've documented a lot of this stuff in my earlier YouTube videos. We have a whole video log dedicated to Can-Am differentials. You know, we break down the failures a little bit and you can go ahead and check that stuff out on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions for us, you can check out muddandwheels.com. You can check out our Facebook page, Mud and Wheels. Give us a call. We're glad to help you out. Uh, even if you just want some information. So anyway guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, we'll talk to you soon.